Okay, we're now recording. <clears throat> okay, we are here. It's already March, believe it or not. <clears throat> so I'll just say a few words about the exam, some reminders, although I think I've given you everything you need. I've been saying most of it every day, but I have to repeat some of it again. So um, this test, there were 11 questions, 10 points each. So that means actually there's 110 points available, but the highest score you can get is 100. Okay, some of you actually, your raw score would have been over 100, but the maximum points that I give out on any test is 100. So you can pretend that there's an extra credit question. Um, so that raised a lot of your scores, some of them um, by entire grade. Some of you went from a D to a C, some of you went from a C to a B, and some of you went from a B to an A because of that extra question, which helped you a lot. Okay, so um, there were uh, 11 questions times 10 is 110 available, but the highest you can score is 100. So if you got over 100, sorry, you only get 100. I mean, you can't really complain. You know, you, you, aren't, you aren't the type of people that need extra help, I suppose is the way to say it. Okay, uh, and some reminders about the exam. Um, you needed to turn in the homework. So if you submitted the homework, uh, if you did not submit homework or at least 70% of the homework, I did not grade your exam, it counts as a zero. If you skip the exam, that counts as a zero, but remember you get to drop one exam. One exam gets to be dropped. The grading scale is 90, 80, 70, 60. So 90 is an A, 80 is a B, 70 is a C, 60 is a D, less than 60 is failing. And that's for everything I do for exams, your overall grade and so forth. Okay, so overall, if you're getting at least 90%, you're an A. If you're close, quote unquote, that's where the plus and minus grades come in. So if I say 90 is an A and you get 89, then that is going to be an A minus. If you get 88, that would be a B plus. And likewise, if I say 80 is the lowest B, so if you're at 79%, I'd give you a B minus. 78% would be a C plus and so on. One exception is that we're not allowed to give C minus grades. There are no C minus grades that we're allowed to give out, but that's the general idea of how that would work, okay? Uh, where's the grade book? The grade book's on my computer. Okay, um, that's basically it. If, I mean, you, you've you got your grades. Uh, I've given you all your grades. If you have a question where you stand, you can always ask me, but you should be able to figure it out yourself because I, you, know, you know all your quiz grades, you know all your exam grades that theoretically you can figure it out. Okay, uh, so that is that for the exam. Now, uh, looking ahead, I am, let's see. What was this? I'm going to change the date of the next exam. Okay, I think it's too early to have the next exam in two weeks. I'm going to make it in three weeks. And I am more than likely not going to do this, even though on paper I can give an exam and then another exam the week after. I'm more than likely not going to do that. Okay, so let's everybody right now, let's set the next exam not to be on Thursday, the 11th of March, but let's make it the 18th. I'll push it back. Okay, again, I've got all these buffer days of which I haven't used any yet, and I don't think I'll need any after today. I think I'll be able to fi finish 5-5 five, five with, with time to spare. In fact, I may even get ahead and sneak in a little bit of 5-7 even. Okay, so uh, as I've been saying quite a bit, I think, I still have these uh, two weeks of buffer days. I haven't used any of it yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I am more likely to use it once we get into trig, which is very soon. Okay, so as soon as 5.5 five and 5.7 are finished, then chapter six, and then almost all the rest of our semester is gonna be trig, okay? There's a few chapters and sections that aren't trig, but we're gonna spend quite a bit of time on trigonometry, okay? And that's where I might have to slow down, but we'll see how it goes, okay? So again, let's make the next exam Thursday the 18th, okay? So if I finish way ahead of time, like last time, that's okay. Uh, I'll just go ahead with chapter seven or whatever. So again, we're doing two chapters per exam. So the next exam is chapter five of which I'm already gotten pretty far, chapter five and six. Okay, so the third exam covers chapter five and six. I've already done quite a bit of five. So technically, I suppose if I were to keep the schedule up, I could finish up to chapter six in two weeks, but let's not rush it. Let's go ahead and set it in stone. For now, Thursday the 18th for exam three. Okay, even though I may not get off this schedule too much. Now, of course, that means this Thursday isn't gonna be just a waste of day. 
it's not a holiday or anything. So we're just going to keep going, just keep going on the schedule. Um, so, you know, this guy might get moved up or whatever, but we'll see how it goes. All right. So the go is five, five today, maybe sneak in a little bit of five, seven, um, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. The most likely scenario is that we'll finish a little early today. And if that happens, then we'll just quit unless anybody has questions, feel free to ask questions, but if there aren't any, we'll probably finish early. Okay. Uh, today's lesson on five, five is very calculator dependent and five, seven is calculator dependent also. So I'm going to have my calculators ready. I've got the more fancy, fancier, graphing type of calculator, which you don't really need. Okay. And I've shown you also my regular scientific calculator. So I'll use both because that handles most of the different kinds of calculators that are out there. Okay. All right. So we're on to 5.5. Assignment is one to 41 odd. As usual, I'll do a whole bunch. <clears throat> okay. So a reminder, you know, I say you have to submit at least 70% of the homework, but yeah, you know, that's, almost a joke because I end up doing a huge percentage of the problems anyway, right? What do I end up doing? Sometimes 30%, 40%, 50%. Sometimes I even end up doing 100% of the homework on some particular section, right? So to do 70% is not that hard. Just, of course, to study for the exam, just go back and go over those problems again. Okay, so 5.5, we're now solving exponential and logarithmic equations, okay? So we have one to 41 odd, so on page 380. Okay, so this is for the benefit of those of you that don't have the book and don't plan on getting it. You can just look at the video. So that should give you one through about 14. And let's see, how high do we have to go up again to 41? So there's 15 to 30 something. And now I think you can see 41. Okay. So there we are. All right, so recall e to the x and ln x are inverse functions. Okay, that means whenever you do one followed by the other, they cancel each other out and you just have what's left over from the original argument of the function as it is. So if you see e to the ln x, that's x, that's e and ln back to back. Also, it might look like this, ln e to the x equals x. So these are the typical ways that they're written. e to the ln x is x, e and ln back to back cancel out. It might also look like this, ln e to the x, is x. <clears throat> so if you have an equation that has an ln, to get rid of it, you put an e. And if you have an equation that has an e, to get rid of it, you do an ln. Okay, also a reminder, okay. We can only take logs of positive numbers. We can only take the logs of positive numbers. So if you end up getting an answer, but if you plug back in, you take the log of a negative or zero, that's a no-no, you can't do it, okay? And this is borne out by the graph of a log function. Okay? You might recall how a log function in general looks. Log functions look something like that. Y equals log base B of X. Well, this is for a base B greater than one. Okay, they all look like this. So the domain is zero to infinity. The range was all real numbers, you might recall. This goes as high and as low as you want, but the only numbers you're allowed to input are positive quantities, okay? So you cannot take the log of zero or negative values. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind as we do some of these problems. Okay, so let's get started. Number one, five to the X, whoops, screen share got shut off. Uh, I hope that's not gonna be an issue. Let me try to get it back again. Okay, 
think I just jarred something here. All right, five to the X. Oh no. Five to the X equals three to the two X minus one. All right, this might be trouble folks. Sometimes if the screen share doesn't want to hold up for me, then I can't go on. Check my connections. That's always one thing to do. Okay, I think we're back. Okay, so how do I solve equations like this? Okay. <clears throat> when you have an exponent floating up there, the way to get it down is to take a log of both sides. Okay, we're gonna do ln, okay? And yeah, I should have said this ahead of time, but I got messed up from this. I wanted you to leave a space here, okay? The space is to put ln, and I'm gonna write it in red to emphasize it. It's different than what we had. Take a natural log of both sides like so. And the reason why you do that is because now these exponents can come down in front. Take the ln of both sides. So we now have x ln 5 equals 2x minus 1 ln 3, like that. Okay, so if you have an exponent that's floating up there to get it down, take the natural log of both sides. Technically, you could pick any base, but I want you to get comfortable with ln. Okay, it's better for calculus purposes. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's distribute on this side. So x ln five equals two x ln three minus ln three. We're trying to solve for x. <clears throat> So I want all the X's on one side and everything that doesn't have an X on the other. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have the X's on the right-hand side and the stuff that doesn't have an X on the left-hand side. So that way I'll have more positive quantities. Okay, so I'm gonna draw an arrow here and an arrow here. This means add LN3 to both sides. Subtract X LN5 on both sides. So ln3 on this side, 2x ln3 minus x natural log of 5. Again, ln stands for natural log or log natural, natural log. Natural log of 3 equals 2x ln3 minus x ln5. Okay, so everything that has an x on one side, stuff that doesn't have an x on the other side, as you can see I have over here. <laughs> Okay, now I factor out the X. Natural log of three is X to ln three minus ln five, like that. And then I just divide both sides by this factor and that does it. So divide two ln three minus ln five, divide by two ln three minus ln five, cancel, cancel. All right, so X is natural log of three divided by two natural log of three minus LN five, and then squiggly equal to get a decimal approximation. Okay, now the directions say, okay, give the exact value, okay? And then use a calculator after that. This is considered the exact value. So you should always be able to show me this. Once I punch it in my calculator, it's no longer exact. It's only a decimal approximation. Okay. <clears throat> and squiggly equal, squiggly equal means approximately. Approximately. All right, so this is the exact value. And now let's just punch it out. Okay. And yeah, if you have a calculator that can do it all in one fell swoop, then you may I have to put extra parentheses though. So ln three divided by paren two ln three minus ln five. So this is what I typed in. ln three 
divided by parentheses. You need to put parentheses to emphasize that it's the entire denominator. 2 ln 3 minus ln 5. Okay. 1.869 to three decimal places. And there we go. Okay, so that's the way that one works. Right, so I'll be showing you a lot more problems involving equations involving logarithms for today. Five. Log base 10 of x squared plus 36 equals two. And let me raise it up again every now and then. Get it focused better in case you want to look at the video again later. All right, and a reminder, they did not have to give you that 10. It's understood to be base 10 unless we say otherwise. Okay, so if they just said log, right? That automatically means base 10. All right, so we want to unscramble this base exponent result. <clears throat> 10 squared equals x squared plus 36. Solve for x. So subtract 36, subtract 36. 10 squared is 100. 100 minus 36 is 64. So do the square root property, square root, square root, plus or minus. x is plus or minus 8. And so my solutions are plus or minus eight. Quick double check. If I put in either a positive or a negative eight, when you square, you get 64. 64 plus 36 is 100. We're good. We're not taking the log of a negative. So it's okay for the answer possibly to come out negative. We just have to make sure we're not taking the logarithm of a negative quantity, and we're not. So we keep both solutions, plus or minus eight. Okay. Okay, number nine is a little bit tougher. Ten to the two x plus three times ten to the x minus ten equals zero. All right. I can write this as 10 to the x squared. Like so. Okay. 10 to the x squared, I multiply these two together, right? x times 2 is 2x. So this is the same thing. Okay. And at this point, I think it's easier if I make a substitution. Temporarily call that y. And the reason why I want to do that is that I get something that I recognize. Y squared plus 3Y minus 10 equals 0. That's more familiar, right? So what am I doing? I'm letting Y equal 10 to the X. So I'll get my answer on Y and then plug it back in later. <clears throat> okay. This looks factorable. Y squared, Y, Y. Negative means the signs are opposite. So one's a plus, one's a minus. What two numbers have a product of 10 and a difference of three? It's five and two. You want to end up with a positive, so positive goes with a bigger number. You can double check with FOIL. All right, so by the zero factor property, either this is zero or this is zero. So what number makes this zero? negative five. And what number makes this a zero is two. Okay. Okay, those are y values, but now what was y? 10 to the x. So change that back to 10 to the x, change that to 10 to the x. 10 to the x equals negative five or 10 to the x equals two.
this one can't happen, okay, you might recall exponential functions are never negative. Okay, so I can do a little box here. Ten to the x or anything to the x, there's never any points down here, right? It can never be negative. So this is always positive, so that can't happen. So I just solve this. Okay, so how do I solve this? Take the natural log of both sides again. Okay, so ln, ln. You might say, can I do it base 10? Technically, yes, but I want you to get comfortable with ln. Okay, I'm preparing you for calculus. Uh, we're in pre-calculus, right? Or pathway to calculus. So to get ready for that, you want to get comfortable with ln. Once I have the ln, the x comes down. x ln 10 equals ln 2. And now I divide both sides by ln 10. squiggly equal. Okay, so divide by ln 10. This is the exact value. This is called the exact value and now punch it in the calculator for an approximation. And in case you're wondering, you have to actually do this. Don't try to cancel out the lns, it doesn't work. So two tenths, which is one fifth, that's not gonna be the same thing. So you literally have to do it. <laughs> okay, and for this one, I'll do it on the regular scientific calculator that some of you have, which is backwards. So you folks would have to do two ln. So let me show you on this calculator, two ln, okay, and then divided by, where's my division? And then 10 ln, 10, so you hit the 10 and then ln. So that's the backwards type of calculator. And then equals 0 0.3010, so 0 0.301, round it off. Okay, so just check to make sure that you can do it on your calculator. Okay, so I've shown you the two basic types, the forward type of calculator or the backward type of calculator, where you have to hit it backwards. Okay. All right, 13 is a little bit unusual. There's two parts to it. log base three of six X is log base three of six plus log base three of X. Hmm. That looks like one of the properties of logs already. In other words, back on Five point four three sixty three. That first property, log base b of p plus log base p of q, b of q equals log base b of p q. That's exactly this going from right to left. So this is always true wherever x is defined. When is x defined for positive values? Okay. So x is any positive value, or the solution set is from zero to infinity. Okay. Any positive number would make that work. Okay, that's directly right out of the law, right? It's one of the laws. The log of a product is the sum of the logs, as we would sometimes say, <clears throat> but it means anything you plug in that's allowed works. It's what's allowed positive quantities. Okay, so that's how A works. I believe number 11 was similar, but B is a little bit different. Log base three of six X equals log base three of six. Oops, no, sorry. What am I doing? Log base three of six X equals six log base three of X. Okay, that's what I want. All right, I have a property of logs that says this can climb back up. Log base three of six X 
equals log base three of x to the sixth. And now, maybe I'll just cover these up. <clears throat> I have log base three of something equals log base three of something else. That means these two somethings have to be equal. Whatever is behind the left side pen has to match whatever is on the right side pen, right? Log base three, blah, 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 equals log base three of blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's not gonna be, suppose this is a six and this is a seven, that's not gonna work. Or this is five and this is 21, that's not gonna work. They have to be equal, okay? So now I just set six X equal to X to the six and solve that. Okay, subtract a six X, X to the six minus six X equals zero. Factor out an X, X to the fifth minus six equals zero. That means X equals zero or X to the fifth minus six equals zero. X equals zero, I'm throwing out because I'm not allowed to take the log of zero. So I just solve this, add six, X to the fifth equals six. How do I get rid of the five? Take the fifth root. X is the fifth root of six. So that's the exact answer. That's a positive quantity, okay? Some of you have a calculator that can do fifth roots. If you have it, great. Some of you don't. So I'll show you the technique that all calculators should be able to have. Okay, I can write it as six to the one fifth power. Okay, remember this is the power, this is the root. Okay, but what's one fifth as a decimal? That makes it a little bit easier. One fifth is 0 0.2, right? Okay, so in terms of writing my answer down on paper, okay, what you can all do is raise six to the 0 0.2 power. Okay, some of you have a button that can take fifth roots, seventh roots, any root that you want. You all have a square root, but some of you, maybe you can't do a third root, fourth root and so on. Uh, so you can all, all do an exponent. So I'm gonna do six to the point two. That's how I'm gonna get the fifth root. Okay, so I'll show you six raised to the point two. That's taking the fifth root. 1.4309 means 1.431. 1.431. Okay. That's the number that if I raise it to the fifth power, I get six. 1.431 times 1.431 times 1.431 times 1.4, can't even say it. But if you do it five times, you should get six. And just for fun, let me check that. I'll take my answer and raise it to the sixth power. Oops, I was supposed to raise it to the fifth power. My bad, oh well, let me get back to where I was. Yeah, there we go, six. Okay, so it's confirmed that it works. All right, so that's the basic idea behind a lot of these problems. <clears throat> Okay, uh, just mention quickly, I'm not gonna do it, but I'll talk 15, well, I'm sort of doing it. 15, see that seven log base seven? Those are inverse functions, so they cancel out. So at first glance, you say, oh yeah, there it is, two X equals two X. But again, since there's a log, you can only take the log of a positive quantity. So the answer to 15 is again, only positive numbers. So 15's answer is like 13a, x is any positive value or zero to infinity. So if you wanna make a no note of that, the answer to 15 is just like 13a. Only positive quantities. All right, um, now I see a lot of E stuff and LN stuff. Let me show you that. 17, there's a log and a log. So let me show you that. Okay, 
is 17. Log base two of log base three. of x equals negative one. Maybe don't even look at this yet. Two is the base, exponent, result. Two to the negative one is this, okay? So two raised to the negative one is whatever is behind my pen, which I now know is this funny thing log base three of X. Okay, what is two to the negative one? It's one half. Unscramble it again. Base, where's the exponent? All by itself on the other side of the equal sign, come back in for the result. So three raised to the one half equals X. What does it mean to raise something to the half? Square root. So I just take a square root of three. The curl out. All right, so I'll do it on the backwards calculator this time. So if you have this type of calculator, you have to hit three first and then square root button. 1.73205, so round it off to three decimal places is 1.732. Like that. All right, uh, 25, unfortunately has quite a few, but they all kind of look the same. 25 A, B, C, D, okay? So how about I do A? E to the two X plus two E to the X plus one equals zero. E to the two X, plus two e to the x plus one equals zero. Okay. Now, this one is kind of like a problem we already did where I made a substitution for y. You see, how do you know to do that? If I see that this is x and this is two x, this exponent is twice as big as this one, that's a good time to think of it in this light. Okay, e to the x, e to the 2x, exactly double. So I will pretend this is e to the x squared plus two e to the x plus one equals zero, like so. Okay. And I'm now gonna call this y, exactly the same kind of game as over here. This is y. In other words, y is e to the x. So it looks nicer, y squared plus two y plus one equals zero. That factors into a perfect square, y plus one squared equals zero. So what number makes that zero? Negative one, y equals negative one and change it back to what it was, y is negative one. Negative one equals e to the x. Exponential function negative, that can never happen, right? So no solution. You can write this symbol, which stands for empty set also for no solution, e to the x can never be negative one. Okay. Now I'll contrast that with B, which looks almost the same, 
except there's a negative in there, e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x plus 1 equals 0. If you do the exact same substitution, OK, e to the x squared minus 2 e to the x plus 1 equals 0. And let this be y. You can fill in the details, but it'll be y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals 0. All the algebra here is exactly the same as the algebra here, except instead of a plus, it's a minus, which means you would have y minus 1 squared equals 0. And that means y equals 1. Now let me substitute back e to the x equals 1. Okay, how do I solve that? Okay, one way is to realize that, oh yeah, if I raise anything to the zero power, I automatically get one. So x is going to be zero, because anything that's zero is one. Now, if you forget that, the trick is to take the natural log of both sides, right? So that you get an ln and e back to back, okay? So in other words, go like this, ln e to the x equals ln one, these cancel out. So x is natural log of 1, which comes out to be 0. And if you try 1 natural log, you get 0. Okay. Or you could, of course, realize that natural log functions say, oh, yeah, they all look like that in general. So they all go through the point 1, 0. So log of any base of 1 comes out to be 0 like that. OK. All right, then uh, what time is it? Fine, 27. I'll show you 27, they actually give you a hint. So we'll do that. Hint, multiply both sides by e to the x. e to the x minus e to the negative x equals one. Okay, so what they're saying is to do this. Multiply both sides by e to the x. So what's e to the x times e to the x, e to the 2x? e to the x times e to the negative x is e to the 0. Looks like that. <laughs> Subtract e to the x. And now notice this looks like that problem, or that problem, or that problem. Okay, so do the same substitution, make it e to the x squared minus e to the x minus one equals zero, let y equal e to the x. So you have y squared minus y minus one equals zero, much nicer. This thing cannot be factored. So we have to use a quadratic formula. Okay, I reached the bottom of my paper, so I gotta turn it around. But let's see, A is one, B is negative one, C is negative one, right? Quadratic formula, one, negative one, negative one. Okay, so throw it in a quadratic formula. Okay, so negative B, negative B is positive one, plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative one squared is one, minus four AC. A is one, C is negative one. So one, negative one over 2a, 2 times 1. So a little bit clumsy. 1 plus or minus square root of, let's see, 1 plus 4 is 5, all over 2. 
All right, so that's y. And what was y? Y is e to the x. So it looks like I have two possible solutions. But again, e to the x must be positive. Square root of 5 is bigger than 1, right? It's 2 something. So 1 minus that is going to give me a negative. That's not allowed. So I'm going to cross off, squiggle out here, the negative. That cannot happen. Right? Because if you get 1 minus radical 5 over 2, it will be a negative number. Again, exponential from this can never be negative. Okay. So I put e to the x. I'm, I'm leaving a space here for a reason. 1 plus radical 5 over 2, and I'm leaving a space. Okay. And what's the trick to get rid of e? ln. So ln and e cancel out. <laughs> So x is this funny number, ln of 1 plus radical 5 over 2 squiggly equals. OK, so let's see what we get. Natural log parentheses 1 plus square root of 5 Actually, I think I need another set of parentheses. divided by two parentheses. If you want to see exactly how I did it, emit here, right? Ln paren paren, one plus radical five paren divided by two paren. I need the extra parentheses, okay? Because I have to separate it the numerator from the denominator, but I need another, I need the outside ones to indicate I'm taking the log of the whole thing. Okay, so again, it's on my calculator here, it's ln paren paren, one plus radical five paren divided by two paren. Anyway, 4, uh, 0.481, round it off. 0.481. Okay. Okay, what time is it? Well, it's almost time to break. <clears throat> Okay, more log equations that involve some properties. So I'll do 31 or which one did I just do? 27, okay. 31 and then we'll break. Log base six of X plus log base six of X plus one equals one. All right, what you want to do here is write it as a single log. Because once I have log base six of blah, 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 I can start unscrambling. So I put these together. There's a plus here. So do you recall, what do I do if there's a plus here with these two guys? If there's a plus, you multiply the two expressions, right? Whoops, that's not the section. the page that I showed you earlier, if I can find it again. 363, the top one. The top one, I'm going from right to left. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's left to right. It's left to right. You have the log of a sum, log base B of P plus log base B of Q. Okay, summing those. So you multiply them, log base B of P, Q. In other words, whoops, didn't want that to be red. Log base six of X times X plus one equals one, like so. Okay, now I can unscramble it, go like that and like that. Six to the one equals X times X plus one. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so multiply this out, subtract six on both sides, minus six, minus six, zero equals x squared plus x minus six. 
uh, factor. X, X. What two numbers have a product of six and a difference of one, three and two? Plus should go with the larger number. Okay. Double check with FOIL, right? X squared minus two X plus three X minus six. Okay, then by the zero factor property, either this is zero or this is zero. What number makes that zero? Negative three. What number makes that zero? Two. X equals negative three or positive two. However, negative three is not allowed. You're not allowed to take the log of a negative quantity. Right? That's the reason why I emphasize that back here. We can only take logs of positive numbers. Okay, so this one's no good. Two is okay. If I plug in two, plug in two, it looks like we're good. So X equals two, right? So that is that. Okay, folks, uh, it's almost noon. So we'll go ahead and break. Uh, I'm very close to being done. Okay, so after the break, I'll do some more problems, finish it up. Maybe I'll sneak in the introduction at 5.7. And we'll probably finish early, in which case, if you want to ask questions uh, of any of us, then you may. But if not, then I'll probably just let you go after that. Okay. All right. So we'll break. We stop to share. 11.58 is what I have. Okay. So we'll break into a 12.10. Okay. And I'll put that in the chat also.
Give me a read, Professor. Professor Holm, you're still on mute. Oh, I was muted. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's continue on where we left off. Let me share the screen. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to continue on with some more problems. I got up to 31. And um, we only need to go up to 41, is what I was trying to say. Okay, so I'll do some more problems. I'll sneak in a little bit of 5.7, and we'll probably finish early. Okay, and if you want to stick around, then you can ask Mackenzie, Star, or me any questions that you have. It'll become sort of like an office hour that's optional. And if you don't have any questions, then you can just go. How's that? Okay, I was going to give you you know, one of those in-class assignments, but it doesn't really work that well now when you have, you know, all the symbols and, you know, E's and L's and so on. So maybe not today, maybe tomorrow I'll give you one of those, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. So get back to what we were doing. Last one I did was 31. So I'll do some more of this type. Okay, how about let's do 35. Log base 10 of 2x plus 4. Plus log base 10 of x minus 2 is equal to 1. Okay. 35. Log base 10 of 2x plus 4. Plus log base 10. X minus two equals one. All right, so there's a plus symbol. It means I multiply them just like that one. If there's a minus, I would divide them. Okay, now see if I can try to show you one of those also. Okay, so I multiply these two log base 10 of 2x plus 4 times x minus 2 equals 1. Now I unscramble it. Base is 10. Again, a reminder, you don't have to actually write that 10. If they didn't have it, it would still mean the same thing. The base is understood to be 10. So 10 to the first power is all this stuff. 10 to the one is two X plus four X minus two. Well, that's 10. Okay, foil this out. Two X squared minus four X plus four X, that cancels out of minus eight. Okay, again, two X times X is two X squared. 2x times negative 2 is a minus 4x, but then plus 4x cancels out, so minus 8. Okay, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> well, there's a couple of ways you can approach this. How about add 8? 18 equals 2x squared. Divide by 2. x squared equals 9. Then by the square root property, square root, square root, plus or minus, X is plus or minus three at the beginning. But I notice again, negative three is not allowed because if I put a negative three either here or here, I'll be taking a log of a negative. So that's no good. If I plug in three, I'm good. Okay, so X is equal to three only. So that's my solution. Right. So again, we had a property that says if you have the log of something plus log of something, it's a log of their product. If there's a minus sign, you end up dividing. So let me show you one of those. Okay. That would be like which one? 37 looks like, right? 
37, log 10 x plus 3 minus log base 10 of x minus 2 equals 2. Okay, let's try that one. Log base 10 <coughs> x plus 3 minus log base 10 of x minus 2 equals 2. Let's see if I did that correctly. All right, so there's a minus sign. I turn into a division problem. Log base 10 of x plus 3 over x minus 2 equals 2, like that. I could put parentheses, although it's sort of optional. So back on that page that I showed you earlier, page 363, that's the second one down. The one with the minus sign, right? Log base b of p minus log base b of q is log base p of p over q, the quotient. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, so unscramble it. Base, exponent, result. 10 squared is x plus 3 over x minus 2. Okay. Multiply both sides by x minus 2. x minus 2. Cancel, cancel. 10 squared is 100. 100 x minus 2 equals x plus 3. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad anymore except maybe have some pretty weird numbers. 100x minus 200 equals x plus 3. Add 200 and subtract x. So 100x minus 1x is 99x equals 200 plus 3, 203. So it looks like x is this weird number 203 over 99. And let's see, that's a little bit bigger than 2. So I'm OK. If I subtract 2, I still have a positive quantity. OK, so we keep it. And decimal approximation, 203. 203 divided by what? Divided by 99, divide 99. 2.05050, I'm repeating. So to three decimal places, 2.051, round it off, right? 2.051. Okay. All right, then uh, I think I just have to show you one more, then that's it. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to sneak in a little bit of the next section because on paper, I have that as being two sections. I mean, today was only supposed to be one section. So anything I sneak in today would help. And then by the way, 6.1 is the beginning of trig. So it looks like we will start some trig tomorrow and I anticipate possibly starting to quote unquote fall behind there. But you know, reminder we have two weeks of buffer here. So once we get into trig, I may fall behind the schedule, but you know, we'll see how it goes. All right, 39. Log base 10, X plus one. Two log base 10. X minus one. <clears throat> okay, my goal is to make this look like log base 10 of something, log base 10 of something. Then these two somethings have to be equal. But there's a two in a way. How do I get rid of the two? I just bring it up here as an exponent. Right? The other property of logs, okay, add 
I'll go ahead and show you that same page again that I've shown you many times now. Page 363, that's the third one, third one down. Log base B of P to the R power equals R log base B of P. We're going from right to left here. I'm doing the right-hand side and taking a coefficient and making it climb up next to the P there. Okay, so log base 10 of X plus one equals log base 10 of X minus one squared. Okay. <clears throat> and this is what I have. Log base 10 of blah, blah, blah equals log base 10 of blah, blah, blah. Behind these two pens better be the same thing. So if this is six, this side can't be seven, clearly, right? If this is 43 and a half, this better be 43 and a half, okay? So now I just set these two equal to each other and I don't have to worry about logs anymore. So X plus one equals X minus one quantity squared, solve. Okay, X plus one equals X squared minus two X plus one. If I square this, right? X minus one squared is this thing. Okay, let's subtract these over. So I get a zero. It, generally, whenever you have a quadratic equation, try to get everything on one side equal to zero. So that's gonna be X squared. If I subtract an X, let's see, that's gonna be what? Negative X, negative X. Negative three X. And ones cancel out, don't they? Yeah, so I just leave it like that. X times X minus three factor. So by the zero factor property, either this one is zero or this one is zero. So X equals zero or X minus three equals zero. X equals zero is done, X equals three. Okay. But double check with the original. Let's see if I plug in zero right there, I'm taking a log of a negative number. So that's no good, so that's out. X equals three is okay. I'm only taking logs of positive. So my solution is X equals three. Okay, I'm marking this off. I'm done with five, five. <clears throat> okay, so I've done what all I needed to do today. It's only 1225 or something like that. So I will officially end in maybe five minutes, 10 minutes at the most, and then I'll let you ask questions. But if you don't have any, you can leave. Okay, so what is five, seven about? Just to give you a heads up. They're all word problems. On exponential growth and decay, page 392. Okay. There's one formula, put this on your next cheat sheet, okay. right there. It looks like N, they wrote a funny looking N. I don't know why they made it that funny. I'm just gonna call it N. N of T equals N zero E to the KT for exponential growth and decay. So I'm gonna write that equation for you also. Exponential growth and decay. It turns out there's a lot of naturally occurring phenomena that obey this rule. N of T is N zero e to the kt and what do all the symbols mean n0 is initial amount it's the amount that you start off with n sub t is another amount after a certain amount of time at time t
K is a constant. We'll usually be solving for that. And T, as you might guess, is time. E is the usual E base of natural logarithms. Just put, you know, 2.718, blah, 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 blah. I've shown you E a couple of times already, I believe. If you want to see it again, E to the first power, second function, E to the one, 2.7182A, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's E. Okay, so a lot of physical phenomena obey this rule for either a growth or a decay. The amount at a certain time, N of T, is N zero E to the KT. And I do want to add, sometimes you'll see the formula with different letters. They might have A for amount. They might have P for population. Okay, but it's all really the same formula. Okay, so N of T is N zero E to the KT. You just have to pick up from the words and the word problems, all the corresponding parts and then plug in as appropriate. Okay, so N of T, the amount at time T is N zero initial amount E to the KT. E is the base for natural logarithms. Okay, that E, that's the 2.718 E. K is a constant, T is time. So you just throw everything in to the correct formula. Okay, I'll show you one example, just to give you a few of what we're headed up against for tomorrow, and then I'll stop. So every single one of these is a word problem, so that's why I didn't give you that many, because they're all word problems. <clears throat> and this is also very calculator dependent, so you want to have your calculator handy for this. Okay, uh, how about I do number two, since that's an even one, you don't have the answers in the back of the book. At the start of an experiment, two times 10 to the fourth bacteria are present in a colony. Eight hours later, the population is three times 10 to the fourth. Determine a growth constant K. What was the population two hours after the start of the experiment? Okay, so you have all those words there. N of T equals N zero E to the K T. N zero, it says at the start of the experiment. That's the N zero, two times 10 to the fourth. Yeah, I'm not sure why they wrote it like that. It makes it extra hard, but two times 10 to the fourth is two followed by four zeros, one, two, three, four. So in other words, 20,000, that's the N zero. Then they said something about three times 10 to the fourth, that must be 30,000, eight hours. Okay. So T equals eight hours, 30,000, three times 10 to the fourth. Okay, then it tells you stuff like determine the growth constant K and B, what was the population two hours after the start of the experiment? Okay, so here's what you do. Initial amount, new amount, 20,000 goes here, 30,000 goes here, eight goes here, so for K. So 30,000 goes here, 20,000 goes here, E to the K times T, which is eight like that, solve for K. All right, so divide by 20,000. Thirty 30,000 divide 20,000, I don't need to calculate for that, that's three over two, 1.5, right? 1.5 equals E to the eight K. All right, I need to get that eight K down. So how do I get rid of the E? LN, natural log both sides, LN, LN. Yes, this comes down, but even better, these just get wiped out completely. So LN 1.5 is 8K, divide by eight, divide by eight, cancel, cancel. So K is natural log of 1.5 divided by eight. Squiggly equal. 
Okay, ln 1.5 divided by 8. 0 0.050683. Ideally, you keep every single digit. Okay, we don't feel like writing every single digit, but how about I'll just put uh, six digits 0 0.050683. 0 0.050683. That's the that's answer to part A. It says determine the growth constant K. All right, put that back in here. N zero is 20,000. So now I have my formula as N of T is N zero, 20,000. E the K, which I now know is this, T. So that's the idea. B, 2B. What was the population two hours after the start of the experiment? Plug in two. So N of two is 20,000 E to the point 0.050683 times two. Okay, and ground rules for population. <clears throat> population used to ground to the nearest whole number, no fractional people or anything like that. Okay, so I'll just punch that out. 20,000 second function e raised to the two times the answer. 22,134, round it off. 22133.6, call it 22134, round it off. So that's what we're gonna be doing most of tomorrow. Problems that are like this. Okay, so exponential growth and decay. Here's the formula. N of T is N zero, E to the KT. Put it on your next cheat sheet. Okay. And so based on this information, N zero was 20,000, that goes there. T is eight, that goes there. 30,000 goes there. Okay. If you want, remember you can, you're allowed to put one of these sample problems on your formula sheet also. <clears throat> Solve for K, divide by 20,000. Take the natural log of both sides. That's a common theme, taking the natural log. And then that will cancel out. Solve for K. Once I have this, they tell me some other time, I plug it in. Or they might tell me some other number, like they might say the number is 40,000 or 60,000, whatever you can plug that in and solve for T from there. Okay, I'm done folks. So I'm almost done with chapter five, even though we just finished the test, uh, material wise, um, halfway or more than halfway of the material needed for the following test. Okay, but again, we're changing the date, any, no matter what, to Thursday the 18th, not on the original schedule. Again, I might end up slowing down when it comes to trig, because trig is always a little bit tougher material we have there, okay. Anybody want to ask a general question? And if not, you can stick around for specific questions if you have any. Okay, general questions about anything, please. Okay, we're formally done. So you have a choice. Uh, you're allowed to leave, but if you want to stick around and ask stuff, okay. So um, Mackenzie and Star and I will stick around for a little while if anybody has any questions. And if there isn't anybody that asked, then we're all just going to leave. Okay. So you're free to leave. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, but if you want to stick around and ask questions, you may also. Thank you. Whoops.
change, see more people dropping out. Okay, for anybody who's still here, if you wanna go ahead and either unmute yourself or put something in the chat, you may. So uh, let's see, Alex. Hmm. Alex, do you have any questions about anything? Alex, are you there? Okay, it looks like everyone's gone. Okay, um, so I'll just talk quickly, Star and McKinsey. Um, you know, I'll leave it up to you. I know you might have some difficult schedules or whatever, but if you want to do your own review sessions or whatnot, I know you, you couldn't do it last time, but that's okay. Most people did fairly okay on the test anyway, but um, yeah, I'll leave it to you. If you want to set up your own schedule, um, whatever, whatever you want to do with them, that'll be fine with me. So okay, sounds good. Uh huh. So, do you know offhand? Um, I, I changed the date of the exam. If, I think you both got that. I moved it back, so I'm not sure how that works. That'd be three weeks away. Let's okay, see what oh. it. So yeah. Was, so Thursday, Thursday the 18th. So, so I don't. Now that you know when that is, Star and Mackenzie, if you can hold any review sessions around that, that fits you guys. You know, I don't want you to say you have to, but you know, if you think that works for them, then go ahead and do yeah, so. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I think we could find a time to do it. All right. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, you know, everyone's gone. Nobody had any questions. So, yeah, you can just leave and we'll see you guys next time. All right. Okay, see you next okay. time. See ya. All right, thanks. All right, have a good day. Bye.